Alrighty guys, we are making great progress. This is pretty much, you're going to start seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, we're moving along. We're moving along very nicely, I must add. Okay, module 10. This is where we're going to get to pretty much where the rubber meets the road. This is when you're going to actually start looking around and start figuring out things on how the physical security aspect works as far as what is applicable to uh, the risk assessment process, the threat assessment process, and going back under that umbrella of risk management. Uh, basically, at the end of the day, we got to realize uh, physical security, that, that's where it all lies. I mean, as far as protecting your organization, your employees, uh, there, there can be a number, uh, there could be multiple programs and other strategies in place to mitigate threats. However, physical security is probably the one that's most underutilized, uh, and that, that's where I want people or I'd like to see somebody if they were working for me get out and actually go walk around the building take a look at places take a look at uh, multiple buildings uh, where my job at is in the Marine Corps we have uh, assessment teams that actually travel to a number of different uh, military installation reserve centers training centers and things of that nature that actually do physical security and risk assessment so that's something you got to look at it or something you got to take a close look at Okay, uh, at the end of this module, um, we're going to identify events that will trigger the physical security risk assessment process. Uh, we're going to explain why, it's a, why a continuous presence is needed in the performance of physical security. Uh, in the military, we have an expression. We call it, you're constantly improving your fighting position. So when you look at your businesses and your organizations, you've got to constantly be looking at various threats because threats change, things change. Just like you adapt to what could be the latest trend or technique or procedure or something along those lines, uh, that other person, that, that adversary is also adapting to you. So you got to look at it. I mean, going back to uh, just like we try to say that we're a growing and learning organization, well, some of the bad guys are too. So you got to constantly be upgrading and rethinking and looking at or, or thinking of things outside the box when it comes to physical security and the risk assessment piece. Uh, the checklist uh, to require this, uh, to complete this module, uh, the requirements, uh, read, watch the module content, the video lecture on physical security by me, uh, read how to perform physical security, physical security assessment. It's going to, I'm not saying when you see this that this is the end all be all, the physical security assessment. This is just more like guidelines. Uh, basically, your thought process is unlimited. I mean, it's literally unlimited. Whatever you can think of that could possibly be a risk or a threat, you've got to constantly be thinking about that. Okay, it could be um, looking at crime stats, it could be walkthroughs, I mean, but you've got to be constantly vigilant. You've got to always be adapting, okay? Um, you're going to have a couple, or you're going to have a YouTube video on physical security. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, physical security discussion question. Uh, obviously, we got our discussion questions. I'm glad you're keeping up on those things. And this is what I'm looking for. So you need to be submitting to me the rough druff, the rough draft. It's been a long day, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a, the rough draft of the final paper. So just make sure we get that wrapped up. Uh, I give you a little bit of space. Actually, I give you a lot of space. I give you almost a month between the first paragraph and the rough draft. So I think uh, a couple weeks is going to give you plenty of time to wrap up the rough draft to the final product. So you had almost a month to do your, your final, or correction, your rough draft on your paper. Okay? Um, think about it like this. What events would actually trigger that risk assessment from a physical security standpoint? Okay? Some people think about it as, as, as being more reactive and more proactive as compared to being proactive. Reactive is going to be after an event occurs, like a bank robbery. Uh, we got some uh, uh, sound bites and so we got some information in our reading from uh, Larry Brown, Senior Vice President and Director of Risk Management for First Citizens Bank. Uh, he's dealing with over $16 billion in assets and 5,000 employees with more, more than 400 banking centers in 15 states. That man's got his hands full. That man's got his real hands full. So he's got to constantly be evolving and, and, and learning things, okay? He's got a team that they're, they're constantly doing the, uh, they're using a number of tools to actually assess physical security risk, including law enforcement, crime data on the geographical location of a branch. So think about that, okay? If you've got um, 
uh, your business, your organization, uh, you downtown in a major metropolitan city, or you could be in the suburbs. Wouldn't it be in your best interest to actually find out through the local law enforcement? And the cops will work with you. Uh, the police departments will work with you. What is the, the burglary numbers? What are some of the armed robbery numbers? And a lot of this is going to be depending on what business you're involved with, whether it's federal government, whether it's private entity, bank ro or bank robbers, banks, or things of that nature. All that's going to come into play. Okay, obviously in a downtown large urban area, I'd, I'd probably be concerned with robberies. I mean, that'd be something a valid concern. Not only are you looking at your business, you got to look at your employees, the people that are working there. You got to make sure they're safe. So you got to be going out and looking out for them as well, because if your employees are getting robbed on their way to work, obviously that comes into play, comes into play. So going back to the original concept, you got to look at what. Police departments, what other organizations are, are looking at in these areas. Um, you got to do, uh, there's going to be a lot of information being thrown at you. There's going to be a lot of things coming at you at one time. So make sure you're real, willing to, to process that information. Okay, You can't just say, okay, I got 100 robberies and that's it. It doesn't work like that. I'm not trying to get you to be an intel analyst, but what I want you to do is be able to take that holistic look over everything that's going on. Now. That being said, um, obviously you'd be looking at things in a, um, urban areas compared to a suburban area in different light, in different perspectives. But it, it, the way you got to look at these things, you got to make sure that you're aware of what's going on in the area. Okay. Now, if you're doing like our, our subject, Mr. Brown here, the vice president of, of uh, director or the vice president and director of risk management, you got to look at what he's doing. He's dealing with 400 banking centers in 15 states. I think it's safe to say that he's got a lot of things on his plate as far as what kind of threats he would have to have at each individual branch or each individual location. But you got to make sure you pay attention to these things because it's one of those things that it's got to ebb and flow. I mean, you got to be able to look at things again from that holistic view. Uh, you you want to even look down so far as okay in the parking lots of your bank are are they the car burglaries? So just just an, any number of things, and you got to be aware of that. Your best source of contact is going to be, be the police departments and things of that nature. Now, some departments are going to work with you, some aren't. Nine times out of ten, they're going to work with you. Okay, They're going to work with you. They're going to talk to you. They're going to give you information. That's their job. Interface with the public. Okay, And also, you got to take consider to, consideration, too, you're a business. Okay? Most police departments are run by appointed uh, officials, appointed chiefs by uh, uh, a mayor or something along those lines, or they're elected, but they still answer to the public. They still answer to these businesses. So these businesses are going to carry some weight. Right? What I want you to do is take a close look at the article that I put on how to conduct a physical security assessment. It's not going to be overcomplicated. It's not going to be crazy. A lot of this stuff is just going to be things you already know, and it's going to be a oh shoot factor. Like, okay, I know this. I'm supposed to know this. Okay, we already covered some things that um, you should look at as far as like what triggers the assessment. Um, you you got You can do just basic things, and like I said, the, this commonsensical approach, this holistic approach, it could be something pretty straightforward, something along the lines of ensuring the locks and cameras are working, uh, network scans, uh, going back to our enterprise and our cyber stuff, and, and something like that. You got to have that continuous presence also, too. So. Make sure you're constantly evolving, you're learning, remain vigilant, you can't go wrong. You're going to see another um, uh, link in there for a checklist for physical security assessment. Take a look at that. You should be good to go. Um, when you do your discussion question, it's not going to be anything crazy. It's not going to be anything outside of the normal. Uh, you have the two videos and the discussion question is going to be after watching the videos and reading the article, in your own words, explain the distinction between reactive and proactive. I know you just heard me use that, those two terms. Reactive and proactive are the physical security risk assessment. All right? Are we being proactive, which is what we want to do? Or are we being reactive, which is what most people usually do? Take a good look at that for me. Give me some good answers that I know you'll come up with. Keep your thought processes straight. You guys are doing great. And I will see you next time.